morning. Welcome to Godly Play with Christ the King Lutheran Church. I'm Mrs. Kathy Hamm, and um, we are not live today, but I am providing the next story in our series of Old Testament sacred stories. So I am happy that you are joining us today. Um, we need to get ready for our Godly Play story. So the first thing we need to do is put away all those things that might be distracting. So it could be a toy, it could be um, a cup of coffee, it could be a pet. So just take a moment to put anything distracting away. And while you're doing that, um, I'm going to remind you that there are wondering questions after the story. Um, each Old Testament story has the same four wondering questions, so we'll be doing those again today. And you can wonder aloud, you can wonder silently to yourself, or you can wonder by commenting on the video. So different options for the wondering, and the wondering can continue even after we're done, if there's big wonderings for you today. So we put away distractions, talked about wondering, now it's time to get seated comfortably. So in, when we're in our godly play circle, we sit either crisscross applesauce or zigzag, but today I just want you to sit in a way that you are comfortable so you can totally focus on our amazing story. Um, all these stories are so special and we want to be able to fully give our attention to what we might be hearing today that we've never heard before. Okay, now that we are all comfortable and ready, it's time to do our three deep breaths, which is our last thing we do to get ready before we tell a story. So let's take a deep breath in for God the Father. A deep breath in for God the Son. And a deep breath in for God the Holy Spirit. So now we are ready to hear the story of the Exodus. The desert is a dangerous place. People only go there if they have to. There's very little food and water in the desert, and you can die without food and water. The desert is a dangerous place. People only go there if they have to. It takes great courage to go into the desert. The people of God were living in a place where the rains did not come. With no rain, the crops could not grow. There was no grain to grind for bread. Everyone was hungry. The children cried in their sleep. So the mothers and fathers decided to go to a new land where there was food, even if it meant crossing the desert. So their journey began. It was hard work crossing the desert. But the people continued on toward the land of Egypt. In Egypt, the king was called Pharaoh.
people arrived in Egypt, they found food and work, but the Pharaoh trapped them. They could not do anything except for what the Pharaoh wanted. They had to get up what the Pharaoh wanted. They had to do what the Pharaoh said. They had to eat what the Pharaoh said. They had to go to bed when the Pharaoh said. They had to do the work that the Pharaoh said. They had to do everything that the Pharaoh said. They were slaves. They could not go home. One of the people of God in Egypt was called Moses. Moses went to the Pharaoh and said, let my people free. And the Pharaoh said, no. Moses went back many times to the Pharaoh and said, let my people free. And the Pharaoh's answer was always, no. Then strange things began to happen in the land, but the Pharaoh's answer was still no. Then something terrible happened. All of the oldest boys in the Egyptian families died. The oldest boys in the families of the people of God did not die. The people put marks on their doorposts in the blood of the lamb, and the angel of death passed them over. This time when Moses went to the Pharaoh and said, let my people go, the Pharaoh said, yes. So the people hurried to get ready. They packed everything that they could carry. They baked bread for the journey, but there wasn't time to put leaven in it and let it grow and be fat and fluffy like the bread we buy at the store. Instead, the bread was flat. You can still eat bread like this today. It's called matzo. You see how flat it is? When you taste the matzo, you can taste this story. The people hurried as fast as they could. They were afraid that the Pharaoh would change his mind. Then they heard the sound that they did not want to hear. The ground began to rumble. The beating of the horse's hooves and the rolling of the chariot wheels sounded like thunder. The Pharaoh's army was coming after them. The Pharaoh's army pushed them up against the water. They did not know what they were going to do. But God came so close to Moses and Moses came so close to God that Moses knew how to get the people through the water to safety. Look, this one looks very scared. This one wants to hold hands. This one looks kind of excited. This one is walking as fast as she can. This one is hurrying up because it's the very last one. When all the people were safe on the other side, the water closed behind them. The Pharaoh's army could not get them. Now that the people were safe, they were so happy they couldn't help themselves. They said their prayers to God and Miriam led them in the dancing. Now I wonder, which part of the story is your favorite?
I wonder which part of the story is most important. I wonder where you are in the story or what part of the story is most about you. I wonder if there's any part of the story that we could leave out and still have all the story that we need. Wonder, could we leave out Moses? Hmm. How about Miriam? She led the dancing. Do we need any people of God? I wonder. Could we leave out the water? I wonder if we could leave out the Pharaoh. Hmm. So many things to wonder about. So, I wanted to remind you again that you can go to the store and buy matzo and taste the story. So until we're together again and we can safely taste, share food, we won't be able to do it in godly play. But if you want to go to the store and buy some matzo, mm, I can taste the story. I can taste the people having to be in a hurry. So they just made their bread out of flour and water and baked it so quickly, did not have time to rise and get fat and fluffy like this bread that we buy at the store. So I would suggest asking your mom and dad or someone to go to the store and buy you some matzo the next time they're there so you can taste the story. Oh. Now we need to put the materials away. So when the next time we are in the godly playroom, you will, and you choose to play with this story, you will know how to put the materials away. So again, when we're putting materials away that have been in the desert, you have to make sure that all the desert is off the materials. So we'll put away the water. And we'll put away Moses. And then there's a bigger basket with more people of God, but I just put a few in here today for our story. And when we're in the Godly Playroom, I can show you the big basket of people of God. So when you play with the story, you can put as many people of God in the desert as you want. I just choose a few when I'm sewing. All right, and then when we put away the desert, we have to make sure that it stays inside the bags. We don't want it creeping out onto this table or on the floor when we're in the godly playroom. So we carefully take all four corners, and bring them together in the middle. And one of the grown-ups could always help with this too. And then push down so that the desert is all covered up inside there. And then the uh, desert bag lives in a certain place in the godly playroom, and you can either carry it there yourself. It's pretty heavy, so one of the grown-ups might need to help you as well. So that's how we put away the story of the Exodus. And I just want to say that I'm so happy that you joined us here today for godly play. And I want you to remember that God is with you every minute of every day. And I want you to have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. And we'll see you again next week.